Well, here we go. It's a new day and we are going to continue the series that we are dealing with right now. And the series is The Prosperity Gospel and the God of Mammon. The Prosperity Gospel and the God of Mammon. The Prosperity Gospel and the God of Mammon. But today's message is, is the wealth of the sinner stored up for the Christians? Is the wealth of the sinner stop, stored up for the Christians? <laughs> Some greedy Christians have come up with the theology to convince each themselves of some lies and deception that the wealth of the sinner is stored up for them. <laughs> wow. What a wickedness. What a greedy, greedy theology. For you to come up with that kind of thing, it will mean either you are wicked or you are portraying God to be wicked. But God is a God of justice, first of all. God is not a wicked God. So this kind of reputation that you are giving to God is absolutely faulty. So this is not God. This is not God here at all. This is, uh, so the wealth of the sinner stored up for the Christians? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> but before then, let's go ahead and see some videos. Let's go ahead and have a look at one at a video or the other. And this video will... Uh, will help us to understand uh, what we are talking about. And the, uh, you know, that the, pro the problem, the prosperity gospel is a gospel of mammon. And it's a deception that has uh, overtaken and hijacked the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially in Africa. And we all must raise up our voices and begin to condemn this doctrine of prosperity and you will see, okay, because it's based on lies and hypocrisy, and it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's destroying the image of the church, and even, you know, denting the image of God. And uh, so let's have a look at this video here. Okay, for you to have faith, I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any Bible to go back. Oh Lord, open the windows of of everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for oh God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. Stop. No. Okay, so those are some of the deceptions that we are talking about. So, it, first of all, there are two. There are two. Uh, Apostasies in this in that scripture. Open the gate of heaven. I think they are trying to quote from Malachi chapter three that some people are praying that God will open the gate of heaven. First of all, I think there is a problem with that. I have a problem with that concept of praying that God will open the gate of heaven. Now, somebody might come and say, but God said it himself. So, they, they are praying and it is scriptural. You think it's scriptural? That they are praying that God will open the gate of heaven? So, is, what is the problem that I have with this ideology and this concept that people are praying that God will open the gate of heaven? Why do I have a problem with that? Because when you look at Malachi very well, Malachi chapter 3, God didn't say to pray that God will open the gate of heaven. God is not saying you should pray for that to happen. God is saying you should do something, do the right thing. The tithe and offering that were meant for the orphan, orphans and the, and the widows and the and fatherless and the strangers, don't take it from them. Give it to the people it's meant for. This was in the Old Testament, by the way. It doesn't pertain to us today. But since our churches are basing their messages on that, let's talk about it. So God is saying, you do the needful. You do what you are supposed to do. If you do the needful, you prove me, I will come true. I will open the gates of heaven. You don't need to pray for God to open the gate of heaven. 
God himself will do that without you praying. Okay, I think, let's, let's start all over again that video. To have faith, I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any baby go back. Oh Lord, open the windows of heaven of everybody. He won't do it. So, so that whole idea of praying that God will open the window of heaven is by itself faulty. Is by itself, you know, not scriptural. I don't think. I don't. Maybe somebody will be able to prove it. If anybody will be able to prove it to me, that is scriptural to pray that God will open the gates of heaven. Okay. It's fine with me. It's okay. But I didn't see that there in Malachi. I'm not sure what God is talking about there is pray that God will open the gates of heaven. What God was talking about there is that the leaders, because that scripture is written to the leaders of Israel, to these uh, religious leaders who are taking the tithe and the offering of the people and using it for their own needs. The same thing the churches of today are doing. Exactly what that Malachi 3 is condemning is what the churches in Nigeria today are doing. The leaders of the church in Nigeria today, they are as well taking all the tithe and offering from the people, from the very same people the tithe and offering was supposed to be given to. Because in the Old Testament, the order is that the tithe and offering must be given, handed over to the people. So the whole idea of the new testament of the old testament is that tithe and offering is meant for the poor the widows the strangers and the fatherless so the people who are disenfranchised in the society the people who are you know who are poor who are outcasts who who are destitute the people who couldn't afford to 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 have things by themselves that is they are the people we are supposed to gather tithe and offering for so tithe and offering is meant, 90% of tithe and offering is meant to take care of the needy. So what God was condemning in Malachi chapter 3 is condemning the fact that all the people were bringing tithe and offering to the church. And the leaders of the church in those days were using those things to meet the needs of the church or their own needs. And God was saying, no, you are robbing me. Because as long as you are robbing the ordinary people, you are robbing me. So that's what he said because this whole idea of tithe and offering is God's welfare system in Israel to take care of the most vulnerable people in the country. That is why we had the jubilee, the year of jubilee, so that the people who are destitute, who are unfortunate, who are weak, who, are, who cannot fence for themselves, so that the, the, those days they could be catered for and their needs could be met. So it is that old concept that is being robbed or that is being violated and that, that, that was making God to be, to be ungrounded, to be, to, be, to be offended. And so God was writing that Malachi tree to the leaders of the church that stop taking what belongs to ordinary people, innocent people. Stop taking what belongs to the weak. And that as long as you are taking those things, you are caused. But he's not talking about the weak. He's not talking about the people who brought those things. He's talking about the leaders who are redirecting the things from the people to themselves. He's talking about that the leaders of the churches or the synagogues were the ones who are caused. So he was now telling them, give back. Give all these tithe and offering that you are collecting. Give them back to the people they belong to. Give all these tithe and offering back to the widows, to the orphans, to the strangers to the weak, to the poor, to the destitute. Give them back. Once you do that, you try me by doing what is right. Do what is right. Take care of the vulnerable. Once you do that, you will see that I will open the gate of heaven upon your old nation and I will pour down my blessing upon the land. That is the old concept of Malachi 3. So it's not saying that you should just come and be asking God to open the basis of heaven on, on the gates of heaven on the on the basis of what? He didn't even say in that Malachi that people should pray for that. He didn't say that pray that I will open the gates of heaven. No, he said do what is right. So and that is very important. That's a very important principle here. Whenever we do what is right, whenever we do 
you know, the the things that are by the you know expectations of God and laws of God, God automatically releases blessing upon you. For example, when we follow the laws of creation, the laws of diligence, for example, when you are diligent, God automatically opens the gates of heaven upon you. Just because you are diligent. Why? Because the hands of diligence make it rich. The hands of diligence make rich or the hands of the diligent will make him rich. Why the hands of the lazy will bring him to poverty? So it is automatically, you do the necessary, you do the obvious, you do the honors, you do what needs to be done and automatically the laws of nature god has already positioned the earth and the nation and the and the forces of nature the forces of you know atmosphere the atmospheric forces energy of the spirit the spiritual forces everything is being positioned in this in space in time in matter everything is being structured in such a way that when you obey the laws of nature automatically Things work out for you. So you don't need to be a Christian. This doesn't matter if you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. And you don't need to pray about it. And this explains the reason why what our bishop is saying here, he doesn't hold water. And he, you know, he don't, that's why Europeans don't pray that God will open the gates of heaven for them. The Europeans don't pray that God will open the gates of heaven for them because they don't need to. They just need to obey the laws. When they obey the laws of hard work, when they obey the, work, the laws of diligence, when they obey the laws of um, no, you know, excellence, when they obey the laws of process, when they obey the laws of productivity, when they obey the laws of you know, services and goods, when they do those things, automatically the whole forces of nature begin to work on their behalf. So let's start that all over again. Let's start all over again. And let's hear what Bishop is saying. Uh, I would like to call uh, success to come and back this up. Why is it that the, Chris, the Europeans or Japanese or Chinese, from what I'm saying, that the gates of heaven, they are not stopping the gate of heaven in night vigil. They are not praying at all. Because I said that the forces of nature is already been placed in place. Just like God said, you do the honors. You do the necessary stuff. You do what you need to do. You take care of the poor and the destitute. You bring what is brought. I mean, you use what is take, meant for them. Give it back to them. Don't take it to yourself. Once you do that, automatically, you know, I will open it. You know, they need to pray that God should come and open the gate of heaven again. Either you pray or you don't pray. You don't even need that prayer. Just do the honors and the things automatically will work for you. Yeah. So, but let's hear what the bishop is saying first. Then, because they are talking about praying. Because he is actually challenging people that they are praying wrong. Because they are only having the right to pray like that only after they have paid their tithe. But I'm trying to say, you don't even need to pray that kind of prayer at all. Let's start all over again. Then God, I, will hear you. I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh Lord, open the windows of everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. No matter how many people join hands together. You know us. You know how we join hands. So, what he is saying is that God will not open. You know, people are praying that God will open the gates of heaven for them. He is saying, no, if you don't tight, that don't, no matter how much prayer you pray, those gates of heaven will not be open for you. So that means to say, before you can pray that kind of prayer, you must first of all tight. So <laughs> what he is interested in, <laughs> what he is interested in is that hands must rub hands. Okay, something must first of all be put in place. Before you could hope for God to bless you. But what I'm saying is that that's not what even that scripture is saying. What that scripture is saying is that you don't even need to pray at all. Either you tight or you don't tight, you don't need prayer. But this is not tithing. That is, it's not for you to bring tithe that they are talking about in that scripture. 
it is for people in Israel, not for us today, so that they will do, they will not take for themselves what doesn't belong to them and give it back to the people it belongs to. And God didn't say, then come to me and pray that I will open the gates of heaven. So why is it? I said that is the principle God works yes. in general, yes. in, in everything. Yes. God has placed everything yes. in nature. Yes. That if you plant seed, yes. you don't need to pray for that seed to grow. <laughs> if you go... To <laughs> if you go and work, you will reap. You will, you, know, you don't need to pray for that. So all those things we are praying for in Africa. So and that is what he's trying to say. You pray only because you give. But this is not how God works. I said, why is it that Europeans don't pray for God to open the gates of heaven? Why is it that Bill Gates doesn't pray like that? Why is it that Steve Jobs will not pray that kind of prayer? Why is it that Mark Zuckerberg will not pray? Because they know that life has been placed under some laws and principles. Things work automatically. If you do be diligent, yes. the Bible says the hands of the diligent will always make it rich. And then you pray, you don't even need to pray. If you are diligent enough, yes. you just wasting your time to come and be praying. You will think that it is your prayer that is making the window to open. No, it is the obedience to the law of diligence. It is you doing your best that making the windows up. I don't know how you, if you get what I'm trying to explain. I, there was a time you... Can you speak louder? There was a time like that you taught on, um, like, for you to excel on earth, for you to rule on earth, yes. that you need more faith in yourself, that you need more faith in God. Yeah, that, that, that you need more faith in yourself than in God. Than right. in God, yes. right. And I remember that that caused a lot of opera. Yeah, point, people are fighting <laughs> me like crazy. <laughs> At that point in time, because they do not understand that even the so-called... Um, ungodly nations, as we call them, they have more faith than than us than us. They are exhibiting <laughs> in more themselves. Faith in yeah. themselves, they are exhibiting more faith in themselves. They will, they understand the principles and the laws that God has placed on the earth more than believers do. So they are even working more with God mm. on the earth than many um, of the so-called Christians, Christians are doing. Because this teaching that this man is giving fundamentally breaks the principles of the Bible. Yeah. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Mm. In the Old Testament, the Bible says that God causes rain to fall on both the unrighteous and the righteous. Yeah. So that means the heaven is already opened on everybody. It now depends on how much diligence that each man puts into place. Yeah. How much is ready to work. How much is... It doesn't matter who that person is. There is a fundamental line that can be drawn. There is a direct line that can be drawn between the religious nations and the poorest of countries. Mm. The poorest of countries in the world are the most religious. The Ooh, Philippines, the because Indians, instead of them to go and, and work hard, hard yes, they are and be the diligent, of they are praying for the windows of heaven. To open on so, and while they are praying for the windows of heaven yes. to open, the train has passed. <laughs> <laughs> the prosperity of nations has been gathered. <laughs> by the ones who are, <laughs> who are obeying and the Lord. they remain poor and they are happy being poor that way. So many of these um, religious countries are extremely poor. They are the poorest. To, they are the poorest. Because they are, instead of them to be in the factory, yes. working and creating wealth, yes. they think that it depends on God. Their welfare depends on they God. They would rather build a church than build a factory. And they would rather go to the mountain to pray to for pray. eight hours yes. Yes. For, money, for money to come or oh. blessings to come yes. than to go and create yes. the yes. wealth with their own hands. Yes. So that is making God out of nothing because what god has created they are not willing to work with it and in this case now the man has now even brought it to another level and this is very very what dangerous I, so how do you say what, what, repeat what he has just said so he's saying now that for the windows of heaven to be opened on, on the man <laughs> pray you know, pray we know what we are not even talking about pray he's even now talking of unlocking with tight unlocking with you money. have to okay <laughs> You have to unlock with money. With money. The window that has been opened is not even saying that it is closed. It's saying that you have to unlock. Something that's already been that opened. That's already been opened. It's still asking people to unlock with money. That's break it's not just breaking the principles of the scriptures. It's scam. It's absolutely scam. Fraud. Fraud. Because even if we have to if we have to look at it this dimension that if we even we have to open the windows of heaven, could money or do it. Do it. Why should it be done by physical money? money. Material it, things that they don't use in heaven. They don't use in heaven. That even does not recognize. Even if it's saying, okay, unlock by faith, that will still sound a bit <laughs> more, <laughs> more uh, intelligent, acceptable. more acceptable. But then when you say unlock with money, unlock with tithes, of course, tithes in this case is money is not 
um, agricultural products is talking about is money. So if, and that money has to be brought to who? To the <laughs> orphanage home? No, it's to be brought to church. <laughs> to him. To him. To his church. To his church. And now I get it. <laughs> Let's start all over again. What the big man of God is talking about. I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. Tell us what prayer we pray that don't have any baby go back. Oh Lord, open the windows of move everybody. He won't do it. He said, bring all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. For Stop. full of God. So you hear what he said he can pray for. He will pray for people for what? For the grace to be obedient to tithes, to bring money. That people should have grace. Grace to be obedient. To be obedient to tithing. Tithing. Not to be obedient to pleasing God. Not to be obedient to Or to their calling. No, no. Not to be obedient to even have faith in themselves. Not the grace or the faith to be obedient to industry. To be hardworking, to be disciplined. To be excellent. To be excellent in what they do. It is grace to be to diligent. Be diligent. They don't have to be praying for, for that one. No. So when people live in the delusion of if I break money, so if I paid my tithe, then everything <laughs> is settled. God has taken care of everything. And then they can go and expect, you know, people just literally feel that this window is going to pop open and dollars is going <laughs> because to Because the only thing that I need to do is to give the money. Yes. And industry is not taught, um, excellence is not taught, hard work is not taught, discipline is, Diligence is, is not taught. Not taught. Just you know, bring money. Just bring money and the window will, will just flood open. It will, will, will be open naturally. And um, that is why our nation is where it is. Absolutely. It's just but they will be getting richer now because they are the ones who are getting all the money. And that's we are bringing all the money to them. That's why we can't even compare their financial status with that of their members, of people who follow them. If it's like heaven and earth, it's heaven and earth. Because they are take, bringing everything to them. to them. They are getting richer, yeah. and these ones down there are getting poorer. poorer. If there are people that will go, if, for example, this is really true, we should have at least maybe about 100, if, let's not even say 100, maybe 20 of people who are in the same status with them. With them. With them, but we don't, we don't have that. So we have two extreme margins, and um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work now. It's never going to work. <laughs> Okay, let's go keep on hearing the man of God. Oh, to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a long time. No matter how many put your hands together. You know, so, as, you know he said he won't op God won't open heaven to a non tighter. No matter what you do. All these people in Europe, are they titans? No, they are not. <laughs> They don't even understand what this. <laughs> they don't even understand what this talk is about. <laughs> maybe if we're talking to Jews, maybe Jews may be able to relate. Forbes, Forbes, uh, book of uh, what do you call it? Wealthiest man. Yeah, the wealthiest for, yeah, Forbes, Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine. Yes. All the people were there in that list. Yeah. How many of them have been, you know, doing open level? The ten richest men in the they world. They don't even None know of about them is a Christian. None of them is even. None they never heard Christian. about it. Yes. They don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> And the but he is saying no matter what you do. So the question is, what are those people doing? And I can tell you what they are doing. What they are doing is that they are obeying the laws of nature, which is hard work, diligence, which is the, going through the process, the ability to go through the process, discipline, excellence, which is, you know, diligence, which is productivity of service, of goods. These are the things that are making them to be wealthy. And they are making it, and he is saying, no matter what you do. <laughs> and people cannot, even at that point, just pause and think about it. That people don't use their mind. They don't use their mind. And that's the first thing they help people do is to suspend the mind so that they are not able to think critically. Or, or, or because it is, it is a very, it's very easy to dissect, to know that this is a lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, even they who are paying the tithe, they are not there. Even he himself is nowhere compared yes. to those who are on the Forbes list. Yes, yes. Who are not paying any tithe. That should be the first question that should come up to people's mind. That, okay, if this is really... Dan Gote is not paying any tithe. And other people are, you know, and they are even richer than him. And he's saying that no matter what you do, nothing will work until you begin to pay tithe. Heaven will be open. Which, mm -hmm. as if you are the owner, owner of heaven. As if uh, someone, uh, you know... The people in all these people are sitting down there and clapping. Mm. What, what do you think is happening to us? They have, they have messed up our minds. Messed up the people's mind, really. And um, it's just more 
happening like um you know i really don't want to use some <laughs> it's very very sad when people have suspended the mind and they are so eager they are so happy to clap they are so happy to cheer on they are so anything happy to, they say they just, it's just received accepted. without questioning it's just without questioning it's just accepted it's just uh, they are fathers of faith or they are they cannot say anything wrong they cannot be wrong even when it's so glaring that this is against the scriptures and that's why people could come on the platform and still argue some of these things even though it's very glaring it's very all that a man needs to believe all of these things is to have never opened the bible or to have been brainwashed or to have been brainwashed because immediately you open your bible and you begin to read then everything begins to contradict you see the big contradiction if god causes rain to fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous then why would somebody say that you need to do some do something if god is really god if god is really the all-powerful as we know him to be why is it a small man a small mortar that would then have to inflate him to open him to up open him up to unlock it to that doesn't add up it doesn't add up so it's quite unfortunate that um, um, um religious people cannot they practically lost that capacity. no critical thinking no critical thinking let's start all over again from the beginning Let's have another look here. Pray. I can only pray for you for grace to be committed yeah. to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh Lord, open the windows of everybody. He won't do it. He said, bring all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. That's a lie. Eh? It's a big lie. What, you said it's a big lie. <laughs> why, why, why is that a big lie? Because every fact on earth proves against that. We have a lot of people who are tithing very actively and they are extremely poor. And we have a lot of people who are not tithing and that are extremely rich and that are wealthy. So that doesn't add up. That is a lie. Basically, if a man is not tightened and is able to become the richest man on earth, for example, everybody, sometimes the religious people, they, they kind of delude themselves. They say, no, um, the man is only wealthy, he only has money, he's not prosperous, he's not a whatever. But every man <laughs> understands. Everybody wants to become <laughs> like him. Become, want to become like him. In fact, when they are praying in church, like that, what is at the back of their mind is to, be, to become like to Bill become Gates. Like Gates. To become like that. But then they are saying, no, it's not really, it's a lie. That's okay, really what about the ones who are paying all the time? They are poor. They are still poor. They don't have money. They are, they are, they are and they poor. cannot send their children they to school. They can't send their children to school. Even the schools that these people are beat, they can't even afford it themselves. Even though they are paying even the time. they are paying the title. So why is, the God not open, why is God not opening it? Is that these people have their own God, though? Or their own Bible? What, 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 what do I understand? But why is it that people, do you think that there are no people in that church who are paying tithe and offering? And don't even, don't even, because he's saying yes. that God can never open for you, people, you know, if you are not paying tight and offering. Yes. So, so it means that if you are paying tight and offering, and that's what they said, only people who are paying tight and no, offering right. that heaven are open up. But why is it that heaven is not open to all the people who are sitting down there? If the all if that heaven has been open to them, they will not be sitting down there. At all. Everybody. <laughs> No need to come to that church anymore because they will, because be, they will, if, they will be all over the world. <laughs> if the heaven has been open to them, yes. they will not be sitting down there to listen to him now. And it's unfortunate because people do it one year, two years, three years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. Paying tight and offering. Doing that and just hoping and just, hoping they are still hoping. They are still hoping that one day something is going to happen for them. And oftentimes what these bishops come to tell such people. When it is not happening for them, obviously, is you don't have enough faith. Hmm. They say express more faith. You you still have doubts. You um you don't believe God enough, and all those kind of things like that. Start like, it all over again. Let's hear. Yeah. You don't believe God enough. Yes. So what? So they say you don't believe God. That is why your titan is. So keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. <laughs> Committed. Did you miss last month? Did you pay it to the full? Was it complete? Did you was it the gross? Was it on the gross or you took out? The kind of, of fine weekly. Weekly. Yes. Putting fear in people. So, so, well, it's just some Okay, let's play it again. Okay, I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh, Lord, open the windows of everybody. He won't do it. He 
has done it. He has done it for, for everybody. He has, God has opened the windows of heaven for everybody. That is the magnanimity of God's heart. That is mm. the love of God. That is how much God loves every man on earth. What about the Muslims? Including the Muslims. Well, the yeah. have, you, have you heard of Saudi Arabia? He <laughs> <laughs> didn't say anybody is born. Every, every, is as, born. as long as you are born there, you have $50,000 immediately. Everyone just open it. Just because you are born a citizen in that country, Kuwait. Ooh. Once you are born in Kuwait, three hundred thousand dollars is already in your bank account. Wow. Or everyone just open, boom. And they are Muslims, though. Mm. They don't even need to pray or anything for that. Everyone just open, boom. <laughs> United Arab Emirates. Everyone is constantly open, twenty-four hours. Mm. Twenty-four hours. That one. Everyone just constantly open. They pay for your school fees, everything. Eh? I say, even though many of them don't believe in God, they don't believe in God. They don't pray. They they, they drink. They sing because because of the point you have made that God, everyone is already. I've explained that to our people. Heaven, heaven is already opened on every man that is on earth. God has opened. Speak louder. Because... God has opened the windows of heaven. God is not dependent on man. God oh, is not dependent yeah. on what man would do. God only wants us to walk into His love, to accept that love, to realize that love, to. Um, understand how much we are loved. So God is not waiting for you to bring money. He's not waiting for you to um, um, be religious or do one thing or the other. To that perform. To perform. God only wants you to accept that love. And how do you accept that love? You accept that love basically by exercising diligence on the earth. By dominating, taking dominion of what God has already made available. The laws and the principles that he has established on the earth. We appreciate the love of, the, of God, of the Father, that, oh, you are given the capacity to make this. And I accept it. I accept that potential. I accept that grace, that ability. And I'm going to create it. I'm going to make, I'm going to help every man on the head, um, solve the problems of men on the head. So if there's a problem of darkness, I'm going to solve the problem of darkness, the problem of clothing. Not because solve. you need some gain. Not no, because to, I'm, you no. want to God to bribe God and things like that. No, it is accepting the love of the Father. Accepting the fact that he has made every man, every man on earth is blessed. No man was born empty. When he was made, that is already the window that has already been opened on every man. Let's start all over again. They said the window has not opened. So let's see. <laughs> so I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. Tell us some prayer we pray that don't have any baby go back. Oh Lord, open the windows of everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. No matter how many people join hands together. You know, as young people, we join hands here when we come to the front. If, we, if all, this, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. He said, God open the window. There's no way. Stop, stop, oh, stop, stop. Are you getting what's happening here? I don't want to maybe you don't. Maybe you don't hear. I don't want to belong to that kind of God. Tell us now. I don't Talk want to. to I people. don't want to belong to what that kind? If, what kind? If, what kind of God? The kind of God that needs that amount of pressure to 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 mozu, to at mozu is to do something for me as little as my daily bread. I don't want that. And he's even telling his own people that they are coming to Shiloh. These people have. Pay the Shiloh whatever offering yes. they have sacrifice. given sacrifice they have collected offering for that Shiloh yes. they are doing everyday offering in that yeah, yeah. in that video in that Shiloh yeah. one offering morning offerings afternoon offering mm. and he's still telling them he's giving them hopelessness wow he's breaking their hope totally, totally shattering. he's telling shattering their hope that all that you have done no, is nothing this God is wicked these people are portraying the picture of a wicked a God. Wicked God. A wicked God. Even though you are coming in this Shiloh and you have been in this Shiloh from morning to night, yeah. that it will not satisfy this God. He is such a treacherous, tre treacherous God. Oh. He is such a wicked, villain God. Mm. He is such a God that is a that is that is uh, no, yeah, that yeah, is callous, um, callous merciless. He is not merciful. He is not empathic. It's not sympathetic. Yes. He's, he's one that you can never please. You have to keep on doing new things. Mm. He keeps on adding conditions. Mm. He keeps on making life tough for oh, you. Difficult. Difficult. And 
so many things are just uh, um this is just for him like the peak of it but so many things because when they also go to shiloh they still have to fast they still have so they still many, have to fast all so those fasts they don't mean anything they don't mean anything to that god so and then they all did not do is bring. This is not the Christian God, though. This is not the kind of God we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Our own this Christian God, eh? Yes. You didn't even need to do anything. Yes. And when you are yet sinner, Christ died for you. He went and sent his only begotten son to die for you without you giving title. Right. If he has done that for you when you are yet a sinner, mm -hmm. you didn't give tithe. Why should he make life more difficult for you now that you are his son? Even the Bible says that he that did not withhold his only begotten son. But freely give to, to give them to us. The Bible says, "I will shall you not alongside him freely give us all things." And that's why in the New all Testament, things. he's not talking about giving tithe. Because if he had given you his only begotten son freely, freely. why won't he give you everything else freely. for free? No commitment. And no he said, commitment. "Freely have you received? Received? Freely give. Freely give." So is he contradicting himself? So this God that these people are you no know, drawing out of for us, mm -hmm. this God that these people are portraying, yes. is a treacherous God. It's a wicked God. Very this wicked. is not the God of the Bible. This is not the God of the New Testament. This has nothing to do with God. It's just a one man building his own empire on lies. And, and on fear. And on fear. And on oppression. Oppression of the people. Yes, because like you said yesterday, Pastor, for a man to constantly emphasize all of these things, I had to also think about that. If that man, all, his, his conscience is already seared with Ohio. Hmm. This man does not, no longer have the, the, the concern. Because for you to, even the Bible says, when Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem and saw the people, he cried, he wept. Because he saw the soft people, heart. Are, 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 he saw the way they've been battered, the way they've been, they were he beaten. Had compassion. He had compassion on them when they were. And these are people that they people among these people we have widows, we have we have orphans, we have people who all are over just, Nigeria. All over people Nigeria. are already battered by poverty. By poverty. This is one reason why a lot of people troop into church looking they for solution. They want comfort. They want solution to. But them. you are still battering and them more. Just to draw from them, to make from them, to bring your time, bring sacrifice, bring this, bring... So people go home emptier than they came. So And you are not even telling them the truth of what the word of God is saying, that everything has been done, it is finished. Hmm. It is finished, though, it is finished. Jesus was you know, hanging on that cross saying, it is finished, don't need to bother yourself again. It is finished. He has paid it all. The price of your redemption, the price of your prosperity, the price of your advancement in life, he has paid it all. And then even before Christ came, he had already placed everything in nature for everything to work out for you. Yes. For everything to work out for you. Yes. That is part of the love of the Father. That is part of the love of God. This is nature. This is nature. He sends rain, rain and yes, sun yes, to everybody. everybody. He sends the gift of light, breath. If God was really like this, the oxygen we breathe in should also be... We should be paying for it. We should be paying for Only it. Only people who pay tight should be enjoying the oxygen or sun. It's part of the windows of heaven. The joy that we enjoy, the grace that we enjoy, the blessings, everyday blessings of life, the happiness, blessings of family, all of those things should only belong to people who pay tithes. But that is not true. God has opened all of that window for everybody. So why should it? And um, I also think it's dwelling on people's greed. Because when it, everybody, when they are talking about titan, titan, titan like that, people are not thinking about the everyday blessings of life, such as happiness, such as friendship, such as... People want to gain where they have not sown. So it's all about... They want to reap them. where they have not sown. So people should rather ask the question that I didn't pay tithes to have oxygen which is also part of the windows of yeah I didn't pay tithes to have the blessings of rain, rain of rain of the family life. of life or friendship so why is it now that it is when I need money that suddenly now request tithes he needs tithes from me so people all, all, oftentimes all this money for money that kind of instance. if they are saying the window of heaven cannot be opened to you if you are not paying that so what about ox no even the blessings of rain, of rain sun oxygen sunshine. energy waking up every day every is day. that not heaven it's also window it's part of this window <laughs> <laughs> it's also <laughs> the window of heaven now those are real tangible those are the real the windows of heaven the real windows but we are not paying for any of that it's all free 
when it, when it comes to money, but when it comes to money, then you, you have to you pay. Have to unlock. <laughs> you have to unlock it. You have to unlock. It's so sad. Let Let's start all over again. If I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh Lord, open the windows of of everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for so, God to open the heaven, is breaking. What is grace to, to, to give tight? What's grace? What do you need? Grace for that? You want to pray that yes, you need to, you know God has to bring that particular ability for you to is it grace? It's not grace. mental if conditioning. It, if it is grace, why do you need to preach about it? God will rather something. just pray that let everybody just have grace automatically. Why do you need to knock it on people's head? Mm -hmm. So grace is not something a man's ability any longer. It shouldn't be man. When we are talking about grace, grace you don't need ability. Man's ability. <laughs> So it should rather be what God does. It is grace. Yeah. Oh. God should just give us that grace. As long as you have the grace, you, you just it. pay your tithe anyhow. You don't you don't even need to be convinced. Wow. Nobody should be convincing you about it. If it is grace. If it is grace. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is you don't even need to be told about it. If it is grace. If it is grace, which is something you just do yeah. naturally. So when they are talking about that grace, now it's, it becomes like that mental conditioning just to put fear in people that you need grace. So people who are paying it are the ones who have grace, who are the ones who have been graced. So everybody now wants to have the have grace. grace. <laughs> <laughs> but he said the grace comes by praying now. Oh, unfortunately. Well, why is he teaching it? Hmm. Okay, continue. Flash it. It's scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan no matter stop, stop, how stop. many so no matter how much that you... together. stop you know, no matter really... wait wait god won't open the gates of heaven for non tithers so all the people who are in europe who are not christians the heaven is closed, the heaven is closed. <laughs> <laughs> and they are living better than us far better and we who are living whoever has no point in africa we are running to europe so that we die in the mediterranean sea and die in Libya because we want to go to where the heaven has been closed. We are all running. We are risking our lives <laughs> to go to the Europe where heaven has been closed. closed. Uh, people would rather be part of that closed heaven. No, people would rather go to that closed heaven than to remain where heaven has been closed in, your, in, in it's Nigeria. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And this is just so basic and so elementary. elementary. When you are exposing all of these things, it becomes so. Everyone begins to wonder where has the mind been all this year? What has happened mind? to the mind? Because that means it's very systematic. There was there were a lot of washing, washing. There were a lot of things that happened before they brought people, and people would just sit and every day, day listening to such things, and you're not able to really. No you matter what you do, heaven will be closed. Hmm. So America became the closed. There, yeah. that's why they became the strongest country in the world. So China should not even appear. And China oh. is the most close <laughs> because they are communists. They, they, they say there is no Japan. Person. Japan. They are Japan. They are Confucianists, and they, they, and they are not paying tithe. They, some of them. Are, I was in Japan. What surprised me is that some people have never even heard the name of Jesus before. Talk less of Bible, and the heaven is highly open. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Including Denmark. Denmark is known. Denmark, as Scandinavia, as Scandinavia, who are Scandinavia. socialists. Yes. They don't know Jesus. They don't care. But they don't care. And Evo is highly open. And they said, no matter what you do, Evo will never be open. It will be closed. And that's why our country remains. Brainwashing Africa. Africa eh? ah. we, <laughs> our country remains backward because of these such prominent teachings. These are the kind of. And these are supposed to be the spiritual fathers in the country. The land. And people believe them. They believe them. People believe them. And they are leading people astray. They are messing up people's mind. People are not going to church. I mean, they are not going to work. Yeah. They are sitting there in churches and clapping. They are going to pray, hoping for miracles. Instead of them to go to work. Yeah, because... Instead they, of them to go to the laboratories and go and invent. To the libraries to go and... To the libraries and study. And the, <laughs> and the factories will come up. Yeah, the electricity. Electricity will come, come up. But it has not happened for 50 years. So, where would it happen? Mm. 
And the place where they are not waiting for heaven to open, it just keeps on opening <laughs> in Europe and America everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you continue, that's it. People will join hands here when people come to the front. If, you, if all, this, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. He said, God will open the window. There's no way. Open the window. He said, this scripture just will not be broken. I have my faith, so I cannot deny myself. I want the one who said it, I can't be breaking it. Oh God! For this woman, open the window. He said, Oh, son, I won't. <laughs> so, 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 so you'll be fighting. It's a struggle with God. You say, God, open the window. I won't. If we all open the window, I won't. Wicked God. Such a relationship with God. Such a, such a bad, bad, bad relationship with God. Because if I were to be a non believer, who just happened to walk into church one day or maybe go with a friend and this is the picture of God that is being that painted. painted I would rather want to remain as I am where I don't have to induce I don't have to have all indulge of this trouble myself, indulge indeed. myself and let's say for example I live a good life I'm okay I have my uh, the Nigerian standard of having a car and a house to live in and, and a job and a good job I would rather want to be there and not have to <laughs> do with this, anything to do with this <laughs> have anything to do with this kind of God because that kind of God that constantly needs the his struggle open I won't open open I won't open open I will not open, 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 open. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to be there I don't want to be there I would rather want to okay let me just remain where I am and it's so unfortunate if everybody thinks of God this way very bad Okay, no, I should have said someone that should have said. I can only pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh Lord, open the windows of heaven for everybody. He won't do it. He said, I pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. Non -titan. No matter how many people join hands together. <laughs> you know, as young people, we join hands here when we come to the front. If, you, if all, this, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. We say, God will open the window. There's no way. Open the window. Is that this scripture cannot be broken. I have my faith, so I cannot deny myself. I want the one who said it, I can't be breaking it. Oh God, for this woman, open the window. He said, Oh, son, I won't. <laughs> The whole church is praying. He said the whole church will be fasting for one year. I won't. Tell that woman be a titan. He said, he, he has nothing. He has nothing. Then I have nothing for him. It's an interesting world. Please take responsibility. Can you hear what is happening here? Take what? <laughs> this, is, this is a slap on God's face. Go, 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 go. I have to hear that part again. Go back, to, back a little bit. Yes. Open the window. He said, Oh, son, I won't. The whole church is praying. He said, The whole church will be fasting for one year. I won't. Mean, this is very dangerous. He has nothing. He has nothing. Repeat again. <laughs> Take what? Wow. Hey, repeat. Not me. Not as Tanabi, but it's your friend at Tratis. Tell me what you got. What is it? Wow. No matter how many put your hands together. You know, as young people, we join hands here when we come to the front. If you, if all these, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. They say God will open the window. There's no way. <laughs> open the window. Is that this can just cannot be broken? I have bad faith, so I cannot deny myself. I want the one who said it, I can't be breaking it. Oh God, for this woman, open the window. He said, oh son, I won't. So, for this woman, yeah. for people are praying for one year. You'll be praying for one year. All these people in Shiloh, yeah. let it like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand people, yeah. hold your hands together and be praying. What kind of wickedness, God. what kind of wicked God should that God be? And, and say for this poor woman, yeah. 
Is that the picture of the God that we know? It's not the God of the Bible, absolutely. It's not the, there was no one that came to God with a pure heart and God turned away. No. He said, come to me, yes. all who are heavy laden, and... I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will take your burden away, away from you. I would. And that is the, the God... When we open the scriptures, the God of the Bible is exactly what these people are talking against. Is what they are, they are fighting against. They are pushing people away from the God of the Bible. Of the Bible. Of the Bible, the God, the God of the Bible loves. The God of the Bible wants you yes. to come empty and He come just as you are. He wants you to come. You don't need to deserve anything. You don't, you don't need to. Yeah. And He say, even if you are praying, you are begging, nothing will happen for one year. You share this kind of project. The old judge is praying. He said the old judge when he fasting for one year. I mean, so. The old church may be praying, for the old year. church may be fasting for one year, and it won't happen. What? Gosh. <laughs> because of tithe alone. Because of tithe. Just because we want to emphasize tithe. We want to get money from people. And now uh, it's, um, it's wickedness. So um, it's a lot of. And um, I'm, I'm just trying to see the kind of heart from which such things are coming, coming from. Because it is. Tell us. It is um, one thing. To say it's a mistake or to have said by mistake. mistake or something. The thing is deliberate. This and to have done it over the years deliberately. Over and over again. If this is the consistent teaching over the years. I'm really scared for such a heart. The thing and is deliberate. It's very deliberate. This is very, very deliberate. This kind of teaching. Yes. It's very deliberate. What is the purpose then? Is it to, to put fear in people? Yes. Or the, what? The purpose of everything is that these people have determined. On the kind of empire they want to build, and they need the the flow, the flow. They need the fund. constant, the constant source of money. So they are, themselves are under a lot of pressure to fund that ambition, to okay. fund such. I, I remember some of this, yes, a, a popular man of God was saying it when I was in Nigeria, and I heard him that look, everything about him is about the brand. He said it that. Everything, the clothes wearing, everything like that, it, everything has been projected. They can project in one year. This is how much income we are going to. We want to build the largest university or want to build the largest. And building. the money has to keep And the money has to come in. Whichever way it has to, the money definitely has to come in. And for the money to come in, there is no better way to fund that than 10% of every people's money every month. And they must not stop. And it must not stop. It has to constantly. So whatever teaching from the scriptures has to drive that machine push. that would push that flow they have to so god can be aside yeah but they are discrediting god in the process now yes. why should you say all these people in shiloh you could hold your hands and be praying for one woman yes for god to bless the woman have mercy on the woman yes. and that god will refuse and god will say will not have mercy yeah he no. will not hear the prayer for them god does not even come into the picture because it's, it's business it's a business dealing God does not even call God. So they don't care what the reputation of God God's shadow is. is being casted on God. There are a lot of people, and this is why they don't even think about God at that time. all. This is why when people eventually discover what all of this is about, I hope that people do not really hate God. I hope that people do not get disappointed. Or people might go and attack and them. That they and attack them because this is totally against. No, nobody would want in his right mind. In this in, kind of in God. a normal mind, nobody will want this kind of God. Even the local gods, the Yoruba gods of they are not Shango, as wicked as they, that. They are not. They, they are satisfied with uh, pap. They are satisfied with small goods. They are satisfied with a chicken. <laughs> but the God of the, the, this God of um, this God that this man is talking about that constantly gets people stand percent in order for him to be good to them. <laughs> <laughs> that needs all the sacrifices. That needs. Fasting of one year, uh, constantly, no, no, constantly is, is worse than the old Shango. Shango and Ogun. It's, it's worse. It's okay, worse. let's continue. I'm being tighter. He has nothing. He has nothing. Stop. So if anybody, they said, go and tell the woman. He said, no, no matter how many of you are praying. Yes. Yeah, everybody could be praying. God would say, I can't do anything. Okay. He said, then they will tell God and say, but the woman does have nothing to tie it from. He said, he has nothing. She has nothing. She has to go. Out. So what should you do? Go and borrow? Hmm. Just bad. 
Huh? So I did burden again. So, so the poor is woman is already burdened. So they are saying you must give. And okay, if, and if you don't think that you must give, they didn't say go and give it to the orphanage. Go and give it to the poor. Go and give it to the homeless. Go and, but you have to bring you it to the church. To them. You have to bring it to them. And I'm also looking at the interpretation, just as you said, that is going on in the minds of people. Because somebody will be thinking that, look, what I have is small. <laughs> but the picture that is painting is that there is a woman who does not even have anything. And God is saying, look, if she does not have anything, I have nothing for her also. Yeah. So that will be going on in million interpretations, will be going on in the minds of the people. People that will be like, God is wicked. So. I mean, in fact, people, some of them that are under this congregation, a lot of them will be like, but I have some, I have five cars, I have four houses, I have so if a woman that does not have anything, anything, God is saying I have nothing for her, is also equivalent of me giving everything that I have. Hmm. So people would rather do away with all the cars, with all the houses and everything. There are a lot of people so that, are selling, to, yes, that are selling everything to, give to, to give to them because it is if a woman who has nothing, God says I have nothing for her. If a man has four houses, then God is going to demand those four houses too. Hmm. If a man has five cars, <laughs> five cars God is going to, is equivalent of, that is the interpretation that is going on in the minds of the people. That is the picture that is being painted. Being painted. So it is that God blesses you according to how much to how much you already have to the demands, and that's why they call a lot of those things sacrifices or the tithing and all. But we we'll just dwell on time. But that is basically what is being painted: that if you have nothing, God's got nothing. If you have four, God's God's God is demanding the four. <laughs> God is demanding the five. God is demanding because it has to be nothing. So it is that when you basically give everything, give everything. That God then has something for you. Okay. Then I have nothing for you. It's an interesting word. Please take responsibility. That is what they mean by responsibility. Stop. Take what? What do you mean by what is responsibility? So that, that responsibility was ex I kind of knew that I was going to come to it. Yeah. <laughs> so that responsibility is this is what I have. This is all I have. Yeah. I'm okay, <laughs> everybody has to take responsibility, take responsibility to bring to everything, bring he, has. everything he has. So it is take responsibility for everything. There is no way if, if, if they are under the teaching where the woman has nothing and God's got nothing, then if you have to take responsibility, if you've got one, the only way to take responsibility is to give everything. To give one. Hmm. If, if there is no way a man who asks for we bring one, and God will see that That's we are one God, we see that as responsibility. The only way it's going to be responsible is you go for, you bring for. That is to them responsibility. You take responsibility. You, take responsibility. you are responsible. In the in their imaginary, <laughs> that imaginary God concept. Okay? Take responsibility and build in your faith. I came back from a trip years ago and my wife said, what did you bring? I said, come and see. So I took her to the library. I opened the first box, books. Second box, books. He said, what a minute, what else? I said, that's all else. I said, the court. Well, so what, what? My God. <laughs> These people have just uh, killed Christianity. Yes. They have killed Christianity. Let's, uh, uh, Rashid, let's start all over again. Pray for you for grace to be committed to building your faith. There are some prayer we pray that don't have any biblical back. Oh Lord, open the windows of heaven for everybody. He won't do it. He said, pray all your time. I can pray for you to receive grace to be a genuine titan, a happy titan. But for God to open the heaven, he's breaking scriptures. He won't open the heaven over a non titan. No matter how many people join hands together. You know us, you don't think we join hands here when we come to the front. If, you, if all, this, all these people are still join hands together, God will open the window. You say God open the window, there's no way. Open the window, is that this scriptures cannot be broken. I have my faith, so I cannot deny myself. I want the one who said it, I can't be breaking it. Oh God, for this woman, open the window. He said, oh son, I won't. <laughs> The whole church is praying. He said the whole church may be fasting for one year. I mean, tell that woman be a tighter. He said, he, he has nothing. He has nothing. Then I have nothing for him. He 
It's an interesting word. Please take responsibility. Wow, 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 wow. They are portraying a picture of a, of a treacherous, wicked God. Treacherous, wicked God. But this is not the God of the Bible. This is not the God that gave his only begotten son, Sledership, for him to die for us. So that's why we are preaching today about the gospel of prosperity and the God of mammon. This is the mammon God. This is not the God of the Bible. This is the God of the mammon. And we all must be, you know, beware of the evil poisons that we have been fed with. And, um, and begin to seek God for ourselves. Build personal relationship with God. Go and begin to read your Bible all over again. And uh, let God teach you. Let, you know, you know, renew your mind. Let's have a look at another, another one of this. Because in America, these people have been exposed. The media have done a good job exposing them. Talking about this thing we are doing. Until we begin to expose these people also in Nigeria, they will never stop. So we need to talk. Somebody needs to talk. Only the light will dark, uh, chase away the darkness. Only the truth will kill the lie. So we have to begin to speak the truth to set our people free. Okay, that's it. This is growing ministry in the business. Robert Tilton. My prime time continues after this from our ABC stations. This is in America. And this pastor used to be the most popular pastor in America before. And now, it's, it's been exposed, and it's been sent to jail. Before time continues, men that's called bone together, bones together. As many as 30 million Americans tune in each month to watch this kind of religious program. The typical hero lives in the South or Midwest, has only a high school education, and is usually a woman, often 55 or older. God gave me this truth. He didn't send him a rich fat cat. No, he certainly didn't. Most farmers make between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars a year. But while they may be on a tight budget, they're extremely generous. And no one knows that better than televangelist Robert Tilton. So on time continues. You're now going to be a man who takes in more money than the income we figure of Madonna and Michael Jackson combined. Stop. He was making more money than Madonna and Michael Jackson. You know who Madonna is? You know who Michael Jackson is? Two of them combined, they, had more, they were making more money, less money than this man. This was the big star in America of prosperity gospel. He was the big star of prosperity gospel preaching and he was making more money than Michael, by, by Michael Jackson. This is just by, you know, by scheming people. By taking, telling them, give and it shall be given to you. Give and it shall be given to you. People are selling their houses because of prosperity gospel. Making more money than Madonna and Michael Jackson together. Because he was charismatic. He had sweet mouth. And this is what is happening in, in, in Africa right now. They are building all kinds of structures. Robbing our people. Making the people to be, the country to be the poorest in the world. Just because... They have sweet mouth and nobody is challenging them. When this man was challenged, now he was in prison. He had to go to prison. And now he's a poor man. He's nobody now because his schemes have been reviewed. As we said before, it takes a lot of money to keep one of these TV ministries on the air. But we have been told that making money and marketing are what this man does best. People said his organization <laughs> is a state-of-the-art factory for donations. All for the operations and bank accounts of the Robert Tilton Ministry. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. Stop. This is... You see what he said? Anybody that messes with me is messing with the apple of God's eye. That's what they're doing in Nigeria now. Don't touch the anointed, or what they call it? Don't touch the anointed. Touch not the, touch touch not the anointed. Touch not the anointed and do my prophet no harm. So you don't have the right to criticize them. But thank God that America is more advanced. They are thinking people. So they said, no, we are going to touch you. Open up your books. Tell us what we are using the money for. And until we begin to demand for that in Africa, until we begin to demand for that in Nigeria, the evil of you know, making our people poor, the whole country poor, the economy destroyed, is going to continue. 
We've got to begin to, you know, demand for accountability from these churches and pastors as well. Just like in Europe. Okay. Is Robert Tilton. He has the fastest growing ministry on television today. You miss out that and speaking devil, I'm going to beat you up, you devil. I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. Viewers are riveted by his melodrama, his quirky style. Oh, chocolate, I'm a good dear. I love him. And he parlays all of it into a high-tech church in Dallas and more airtime than almost any other televangelist. I'll say yes, Lord. Tilton takes in so much money, he makes other TV ministers look like amateurs. And I want you to make a thousand dollar vow of faith. Oh, I know. Stop. One thousand dollar vow. These are the people that people like uh, Mike Modoc is copying. One thousand vow. At one time. One thousand dollar vow. For what? For miracle. Let Try to find out how much money Tilton makes and you discover the ministry is shrouded in secrecy. The pastor has bodyguards. His offices are sealed off with armed security and surveillance cameras. But Prime Time obtains some of Tilton's financial documents. These are daily deposits. Stop. And based on Stop. Daily deposits. Half a million dollars every day. Every day, half a million dollar in front. Deposit every day, but I will tell you that in Nigeria, people make more money. Oh, Yedepo is making more money. Oh, Abiyome is making more money. Adebo, all of them are making more money than this every day. What kind of business is that for you to make one million dollars, half a million dollars every day? These are the official one only. No Coca Cola, ah, go Coca Cola <laughs> or Apple just by giving, by talking, prosperity gospel. These Tilton's followers sent his ministry conservatively eighty million dollars a year. Profit. Tax free. Tax free. Eighty million dollars tax free. Yeah. Welcome to Word of Faith Family Church. Tilton's televised service is an expensive multimedia variety hour, but for all his flashy style, Tilton insists he's still a simple preacher who cares about the sickness and suffering of his followers. Bones come together. Never been around. He also tells followers he'll pray for their miracles, so they should send him money. Today is a miracle day. In his fundraising campaign two months ago, Tilton told followers he was making a pilgrimage to the mountains just for them. Separating myself from the hustle and bustle of the city life, just as Jesus withdrew himself and went to the mountainside to pray. Like Jesus? The Bible says Jesus went to fast and separate himself from lonely things. <laughs> Pastor Bob flew first class to a posh ski resort in Colorado. Three suitcases for five days. A room with a fireplace. He even brought his own television along. Wow. While asking followers to send in money. Yes, so we decided to take hidden cameras to see what we could learn about Robert Tilton's fundraising. It led us first to the nerve center of his ministry. The company that organizes his direct mail. It's called Response Media. Jim Moore is president of Response Media. He handles not only Tilton, but a number of big corporate accounts. We told Moore that we were media consultants for this man, Dallas Minister Ole Anthony. Stop. So what they do is that they have companies financial no, they have special companies that advise them on how to scheme people. They call them fundraising organizations. So you just tell the organization how much money you want to raise in a year or in a month or in a day. They will prepare letters. They will tell you what to say, how to say it, and what, what to call for. And the members of the church don't even know this, what is happening. And then they will be paying the percentage of your own money to those, to those, to those companies. And those companies are unbelievers. They, don't, they are just skip, skippers. We asked him to show us how to start a big money ministry like Tilton. Stop. Yeah. You see, so they came to them and came pretending that they had another pastor with them. And they said, okay, we also want to do, have a big money ministry like Tilton. So now they want to use the example of Tilton to build, to get advice on how to build money milling industry like that. 
Stop. You see, the key, they said the main key is to get the names of people and form a database so that you'll be sending letter to them that you are praying for them, there is a problem there, or we need to do this, you need to... So that is a strategy. People are making... You see, he's, he's too he's fat enough. He has made enough money. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said the whole thing is to get new names always be looking for new names you see it's all about scheming and all these letters they said people should be writing net letters for pro problems mm -hmm. write letters and bring you know for your problem we'll be praying for your problems but those pro letters they are not going to to the man of god they are going to the company <laughs> They are doing analysis and then they are throwing it into garbage. <laughs> Let's go. That will give you their names. It's easy to keep them on the hook. You mail them something with a gimmick in it. First of all, you send it out in a minute. It gets your attention. That's number one. Tilton sends out an avalanche of things he asks viewers to send back to him. Miracle prayer clause. He promises to touch and place upon an altar. Stop. That is oh, where it's... our own man to in Africa started from. Handkerchief, everything. They, they will call it touch of faith or the point of contact. Point of contact. Con point of contact. But it's all about money. He says he'll place on a wall of deliverance. Arrows he will use to take aim <laughs> no. the sufferers. All those deliverance ministries, the, where he's coming from, it's all about money. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. Even when nothing is troubling you, they, they will find you a demon. <laughs> Everybody in Nigeria now has a demon. <laughs> Either demon from your mother's house or from your father's house. Or demon from your husband's place, or from your stepmother, stepmother, some deliverance. You must need deliverance by all means. <laughs> a tracing. Place your hand there, and he'll put his hand there too. There's holy water from the River Jordan, miracle anointing oil. Holy water, miracle anointing oil. All these things are for making money, and our gullible people in Africa are falling for them. But in Africa, in America, you see, they are exposing them. It's time to expose the Africans as well. The Moore said some of the items come from that holy place, Taiwan. So, you see, they say, where did you get those things from? Because they tell them the water is from only Israel. And the oil is from Jordan. River <laughs> Jordan. And they say, and the company said, no, we got them from Taiwan. <laughs> No Israel, nothing. They are <laughs> this is a company that is doing it, and they are telling them only water from Jordan. Is that no? <laughs> we send it to China. <laughs> China is the shipper in China that has to go to Israel. <laughs> These things are coming from Taiwan. <laughs> in Nigeria, they don't even go to Taiwan. They just go to. <laughs> Baba, so <laughs> Alabama can <laughs> tell something. <laughs> yeah, they, and they are thinking that it is from heaven. God has anointed it. <laughs> you can buy ghost writers to pressure followers to write back and make donations so, to. The letters people are receiving, it is not him right, who is writing it. He doesn't even write the letters. It is the people, the company they hire that are, are write the letters. Does it work? People send them in by the truckload. You see, Jordan it's a River. Marketing scheme. There is a feeling of obligation to send it back. And they do. And you said they're going to send it back all the way up to $5. Uh, it just, I'm not sure exactly all the reasons why it works, but I can tell you from years and years of experience, it does. Stop. The letters are so they are telling you, ah, but how can those kind of scheme work? He said, I cannot even tell you why it works, so, but. That means I don't know that people could be so gullible, but it works. People are so foolish that they are sending money. He said the least people who will send they will put at least five dollars inside. Drive their process so the company knows which fundraising appeals you can use to squeeze followers for the most donations. So they will do 
analysis on you. How many people have cars in the church? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a car? How much money do you have? Where do you live? What area kind of what area you live? So those things inform what kind of letters yeah. are going to be written for you. Mm -hmm. God, who can tell Tilton which appeals reach the richest donors, which illnesses create the most dollar opportunities? Someone had a growth. I just saw a growth. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it creates the impression that after he pays for his overhead and all that expensive air time, the money goes to good works like these. His missions around the world. Stop. But we try so they show them, at least in America, they show that they are doing some good works around the world, which is a lie. But in, but in Africa, they don't even need to show any good work. This is just to cover people's eyes. But in Africa, they will tell you, you know, you know, they will just, they don't even need to. Ma, Papa has said, Mama has said, Man of God has said, you don't even need to say any good work. Track down every charitable contribution of Tilden we could find. And we calculate he spends more in a year on billboards around Dallas than he does on all of these missions combined. <laughs> and what about so, this mission? If the money is using for, for uh, charity or good work. It's less than the money he pays for just one big board. He spends more money on big board alone. Not to talk about other things though, than all the things he's collecting the money for. So he will collect money, let's say, one for one million for charity, and he will spend one thousand there. Tilton's orphanage in Haiti. We kept thinking about Bob Jones and how he told us you could just fix yourself up a sign and claim an orphanage. <laughs> So, you see, what happens is that they say, you see, you see the sign, Robert Tito Ministry sponsored orphanage. Mm -hmm. But really, what the, the man that is there, the American that is there, he lives in that, but that's his own business. <laughs> any of ministry, that same ministry, this same orphanage, any church that wants to raise offering, they just need to pay, let's say, $10 or $20 or $100 to the man. The man takes the to the order to the owners of the orphanage. They put the for the sign, the banner, the signboard for for two minutes or three minutes. Take photograph, <laughs> and the next day it is another church. It's five minutes, and they are collecting millions from the, from Africans, from Americans. <laughs> These are pastors, men of God, anointed men of God. Somebody needs to talk. Tilton uses three different names for his Haiti orphanages. <laughs> Before we went to Haiti, we asked the government officials in charge of foreign missions if they'd heard Stop. of any of Tilton. You see, the journalist went to Haiti because he's using his one orphanage that is he's using three different organizations to talk about three orphanages, but just one orphanage they put photographs in. So they went to the government to say, well, where are the three orphanages on Tilton <laughs> in Haiti? Let's see what the government will tell them. Tilton's orphanages. Yeah. They said no. So nothing from Robert Tilton there. Yeah. <laughs> and Tilton's Stop. marketing director made it. They said nothing. He doesn't have any orphanage. They just go there to take photographs. What's in the phone? <laughs> wow. Wow. Nothing. Just collecting millions from people. Wow. <laughs> Clear when it comes to money for missions, Tilton is very smart. He's careful not to say what donation goes where. So he can avoid, again, how Jim and Tammy got caught.
friends started developing parodies, so-called Jesus raps of their own. Oh dear God, come into this young woman's life here tonight. She has a need to find Christ. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we believe in actors. We believe in miracles. I personally thought I was a lot better at it than he was. Tilton, who never finished college, admits he was a drug user, but says he was saved when some people came to his house and explained Christ. I just changed. I just fell in love with everybody. But he never tells followers how he and his friends talked about running preacher scams and cashing in. We said that when we graduated, that we would buy a big tent, a dynamite sound system, a good amen section, and fly around the country and get rich. We sold everything that we had on a ragged tent, a big old truck and a travel trailer, and we headed out to tell people about this gospel of Jesus. That was 1974 when Tilton started out, and by 1981, he had hit the big time. How? Primetime has learned that for several years, Tilton courted a man accounts have tied to organized crime, and drug smuggling. Mm. Herman Beebe, a financier whose banks gave Tilton a $1.3 million loan, though Tilton claims he never met the man. And after Tilton got the money, he got a new image too, a permanent wave for his hair, plastic surgery, and like his good buddy Jim Baker, a talent for tears on demand. He says, I was washing my face this morning. Oh, thank you, fellow. And we were there one day with Hidden Camera when he made it clear the tears of his followers are good for the TV pitch, too. I thought I was coming there to really help people and to minister to their needs. Bill Hardy left the Tilton ministry after two years as a telephone prayer minister, taking calls from desperate followers. In July of 1989, a computer was installed to keep track of our times. And so uh, we had to basically be off the line in seven minutes. Hardy showed us the phone scripts, which directed ministers to get a minimum vow of $100 from each caller. Ooh. We truly became the McDonald's of ministry. We were selling our ministry for money. And if Hardy felt he was taking advantage of the callers, imagine how this woman felt. Elizabeth Montcalm, a temporary employee at AT&T. When Tilton went to Israel last year, she and others at AT&T were asked to pose as Tilton prayer ministers. I got people calling about their sons being on drugs or alcoholics or husbands being uh, an alcoholic. I mean, people are telling me their most inter intimate secrets, their personal stuff about themselves. And here I am. You know, just a temporary employee from AT&T. AT&T has since stopped taking Tilton's so, calls. He that was just a company. She was not even a Christian. She was not even a Christian. But they were telling them that it's prayer line to take calls. But they were just employees who are just making money. And they have to, they've been trained to make at least, to make everybody pledge at least $100 who is calling. And they're not even praying. They're not even praying. They're just about making them to give money. He now uses people off the street. Lord spoke and said, Mom, I'm sending you to people that have nothing. And his followers believe what Tilton says about himself in the ministry magazine. That he only gets a salary set by an independent firm and one perk, a parsonage. <laughs> this be the parsonage in Swank Rancho, Santa Fe, California? A $4.5 million Lakeview home with pool, jacuzzis, thousands of dollars in furnishings, a four-car garage for Tilton's Mercedes. Though the title is in the name of Tilton's lawyer, Tilton has lived here for the past two years, and the house was paid for in cash. Or is this the parsonage in Fort Lauderdale, Florida? where Tilton has just bought a $132,000 boat. This time, he put the house in the name of a holding company, allegedly for security. But according to bank documents, it's Tilton who owns it. And Tilton's ministry is building yet another home in Las Colinas, Texas, while in the meantime, renting a fourth home, 
also in Texas, for $6,000 a month. And take a look at this. Primetime obtained a document which shows that Tilton has organized his ministry as a sole proprietorship, giving himself access to all its wealth. Stop. In that is now what Nigerian pastors are doing. The church now is in their own personal names. So all the properties of their churches now, it is their name or their names, the children, their children's uh, names. So they put the church that you all built under their own name. And that's what these guys, the Americans did it first. His personal loan application, Tilton's bank says he has one and a half million dollars in cash and CDs. He has access to 14 million dollars in treasury bills and real estate bought at a cost of 40 million dollars. That's in all 60 million dollars in assets available to Tilton. And those are the ones he puts on the list. There's only his board to hold him accountable. So who's on the board? Tilton? his secretary, and his wife. <laughs> we showed Congressman Pickle what Tilden said in his magazine and the facts about how he lives. That is uh, uh, not being totally truthful. And I guess the old father that you should seek the truth. And they better hope that uh, some of the authority doesn't seek all the truth. God gave me this truth. He didn't send me the rich fat cats that think they got it made and don't need God or Peter. He sent me to people that are beat up and are hurting. But how much does Tilton really care about the beat up and the hurting? We kept thinking about something the head of the direct mail operation told us. That the mail doesn't go to Tilton. It's forwarded unopened to Tilton's bank in Tulsa. So the bank opens the followers mail. Not to share the agony, but to get the money. The bank opens the letter to come back in and takes your money and puts it in your account. All we get is the paper document and how much the person gave. And those items that people have prayed over and sent in believing Robert Tilton would take them and pray over them too. If some make it to Tilton, there are thousands that didn't. We found them in the garbage. Stop. At the back. <laughs> you know what? All the letters come, they go to the bank, is officers of the bank, they remove the money, and then look at all the prayer prayer requests. Mm. All the prayer requests end up in the in the garbage bag. <laughs> mm. The prayer request. Money is taken away. Address is taken to the office of the people who are supposed to write another letter. But the prayer request in the garbage bag. So, and you say we should be keep, keep quiet? How can we keep quiet about these things? They are destroying the gospel. They are destroying the name of Jesus. We need to speak the truth so that all, we will have, you know, we'll purify Christianity and bring Christianity back. And this thing is big time in Africa right now. Bank and the Marketing Research Center. The angels of God the prayer cords, the arrows. This person wanted his aim at getting a real dad. The tracing, where Tilton said he placed his hand, ripped up by the bank. All these are people coming... Heartbreaking appeals from the, garbage. from the garbage. These people are getting them from the garbage and reading all the people, requests people are having. Right. From followers. And letters like this one. It came with personal photographs for Pastor Bob. And a prayerful message. All the photographs are in the garbage. Pledge. The money probably made it to Tilton. The prayers went in the trash. Robert Tilton refused Primetime's repeated request for an interview. By the way, we don't know how much Tilton officially claims is his salary now, but Tilton ministry sources say as far back as 1985, Stop. Tilton... That is the reality of what people have done with the gospel. And now in Africa, people don't even touch them. People are not even challenging these things. And it is very sad. But in America, thank God, Americans are, the journalists are doing their job. And they are exposing them. But in Nigeria, you cannot even try something like that. Everything is covered. Leadership. Everything is covered. Everything is under their command. You cannot do anything against them. So let's have a look at another uh, video here of Benny Hinn, where he was confessing that they told him, I mean, you know, this was just last year or so, Benny Hinn, or two years ago, 
he had a heart uh, operation and it, he almost died. He was in a coma and he, he went to heaven, I heard. And God said he was not going to make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Benny is not going to make it to heaven. And it's not my story, he's the one telling it. That Benny Hinn, God said, you are not ready for heaven. You will not, if you die now, you are going to hell. So that's why he came back, he started repenting, but plenty of people are still copying him. Let's hear what Buddy Hinn himself said, how he said God was telling him he was not ready for heaven. I started to pump all the liquids out of me. And within days, I was back to normal. And today, I feel marvelous. But, but, when I came out of the hospital, something happened I'm going to tell you about. And this shows me more about the Lord and His grace. Look, not everyone is going to make heaven. Let's be real. There are preachers today in hell. One of them with a healing ministry that I knew. When, when, when he was dying, he was screaming, they're coming to get me. He was in torment as he saw demons coming to tear his life apart. It doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. That's what matters to God. Now, I come out of the hospital and I have a dream. Please hear me now, this is very important. In my dream, very vivid Sorry. dream, the Lord spoke. Please go and call everybody. Go and call your friends. Go and tag your friends now because this video is very rare for you to come across it. Where Benahim himself is saying he had a dream where God told him he's not going to heaven if he doesn't repent. He's going to hell. Talk to me. I see myself standing with a group of people. I didn't know who they were. All of us dressed in white robes. I was halfway in the line. I look and I see this beautiful gate, massive gate, with diamonds sparkling on the front of it. I look to my right, I saw the Lord as we realized, as I see you on the front row. I saw the Lord standing there, majestic. I even can, can tell you what his hair looked like and what robe he wore it was just beautiful. On the left, I saw this beautiful big organ, and on the organ was this lady I knew years ago named Jeannie Klattenberg. Jeannie, the wife of Alex Klattenberg in Orlando, she wrote many songs we still sing today. Very famous lady, but she passed when she was in her early 40s with cancer and died early in life. And she's sitting on that organ. And suddenly, I see the Lord doing this. And as he motioned like that, she played the most beautiful music came out of the organ. And suddenly the, the, the gate opened, and whoever was in, the, uh, in line first went in, and then the gate closed. Then the Lord did this again, and the same thing happened, the music played, the gate opened, and the person went in. This is all in my dream. Then the Lord does this. The next in line was not permitted in. And she played this terrifying song, came out of the organ. And suddenly, these two massive men wearing white robes, possibly angels, I don't know. They came and they took that person out of the line who was struck with fear that you can't believe. You know how it says, gnashing of teeth. You could see the fear that struck. And I was amazed how many times in my dream the Lord did this. Many of the people in that line were not permitted to, to go in. And then my turn came. This is all in my dream last year. About late summer, early fall is when that dream happened. I, I came out of the hospital in, in, Mar uh, in end of March. This is possibly the end of August and uh, I see this dream and then I saw myself standing there and I looked I saw the Lord no smiles at that point very serious moment for my soul we have to understand 
there is a side to the Lord we have not seen that Paul the Apostle saw. He said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The Christian life isn't all about ministry. It's the way he looks at us. We shall all stand before his judgment seat. Catherine Gumman preached a message one day where, it, where she said, those tears on that day, it will be too late. How true that is. Everyone will repent one day. It, but it will be too late for some people. So now, as, as I'm standing there, and I'm looking at the, at the Lord, and I froze everything in my... You can just imagine, you know, how, how, how I felt, and I felt it in my dream, the awe of that moment. And Gene is looking, and I'm wondering, you know, is it in? You know, am I in? Am I out? And people ask me, well, how can you say that? Paul the Apostle said that. Think about all that Paul experienced. But let me finish with my dream. But the Lord does nothing. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do this. Nothing. And I wake up. And as I woke up, I was speaking. I was actually talking. And the scripture came out of my mouth. He that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Is what I was saying as I came out of my dream. And then the Lord spoke to me just like that. He said, I'm watching you. Don't blow it. So when I came out, it shook me. You say, why would he say that to you? Because it's, it's a very serious matter with God. God. So God told him, I'm watching what you are doing. Don't blow it. What does that mean? You are about to lose it. You are about to blow it. You are about to miss heaven. And this is a warning to you. Don't blow it. I'm watching you. I see all the evil things you are doing. I see all the wrong things you are doing. Don't go to hell. Don't lose your salvation. Paul the Apostle, what did he say? He said, if I don't put my body under subjection, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, if I don't put my body under subjection, I will be a castaway. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Knowing the terror of the Lord, that's in the Bible. Think about all Paul experienced. Think about going to heaven, seeing things you could not talk about. And yet he would say, I would be a castaway. If Paul said that, we are all in danger. Take heed lest you fall, the Bible says. And today, that's why I say to you, we need the Holy Spirit. And that's one good thing with Benny Hinn. He's always repenting. I mean, you cannot take that away from Benny Hinn. He's always repenting. He's always coming to repent. And which means he has a soft heart. You know, but we, we want to get our people in Africa, our leaders, our fathers, to get to that extent where they will also repent. Like, for example, recently, Benny Hinn just repented that he was taking the prosperity gospel too far. Without him, we were going to all fall. Without him, people will not stay in the faith. Let me tell you something. And I want you to think about this. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. So, I think everybody needed to hear that perspective. You know, we needed to see that. And, uh, and I think you, everybody should have those kind of things because they are, they are very scary. Many people don't know that Benny Hinn has done that and that happened to Benny Hinn. And, but not just because of Benny Hinn, but we should just know that the prosperity gospel has, has led a lot of people to hell and is still leading a lot of people to hell. So the prosperity gospel and the God of mammon. The, the topic of today is the wealth of the sinner stored up for the Christians. Is the wealth of the sinner stored up for the Christians? Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So what Christians have done, the charismatic pastors and the go, no, go, 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 prosperity ministers, is that they take this passage out of context. 
They take this passage and say what this means is that, you know, the wealth of the sinner is thought of for the righteous. So the righteous doesn't need to do anything. Just pray or believe God. But that is totally against the nature of God. Let's see what this passage really means. The wealth of the wicked is laid off for the righteous. It's a major doctrine in prosperity preaching circles. The emphasis is on the fact that God wants to take wealth from the sinner <laughs> and give it to the believers. <laughs> Proverbs 13 22 does say, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is thought of for the righteous. This is true. It is written, and the Bible does not lie, isn't it? But is that what it means? It doesn't mean the way we are being told. Nevertheless, when preached this way, there is contradiction in the very principles of God's nature. God is a just God. God is not unjust. So this is totally against his own universal principle. It's against his own nature. You know, in Africa, people don't question whenever people take a, a passage from the Bible and just quote it. They just say, ah, oh, but it's in the Bible. Once it's in the Bible, it means it's true. No, it's not enough that it's in the Bible. You must still compare it to the old, you know, concept of God, to the old nature of God. You have to compare that scripture to who God is, to the person of God, to the personality of God, to the doctrines of God, to the character of God, to the nature of God, to the standards of God. Is it not against, if we just take that passage alone, is it not against his nature? 1 Timothy 6, 9 to 11 says, but those who desire to be rich, that passage, if you just say God will give all the, the wealth of the sinner to you, is like lost. Is giving yourself, you know, you know, you know, excuse to go and be lost in after other person's wealth. It is against the nature of God. The principles of justice of God would not allow collecting the wealth of the wicked to give to the Christian. Listen again. The principle of the justice of God will not allow to collecting the wealth of the wicked. Even if he's wicked, God is just. He will not just collect and give to a lazy Christian that doesn't know how the wealth is made in the first place. To give to the Christian because the Bible teaches in Proverbs 10 4 that the diligent worker will prosper no matter whether that worker is a believer or not. So how can God now go and take the wealth from the diligent worker, unbeliever, because he's an unbeliever, but he's diligent, he's an expert, God will go and take the thing from him and give it to a Christian who is not diligent. The Christian will just mess it up, he will lose everything, because he doesn't know how to maintain it. So it is diligence that determines wealth, it is not either you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. It is diligence that determines it. Proverbs 10, 4. He who has a slack hand, so if, let's say this one who has a slack hand is a, is, an unbelie is a believer. How can God now go and take the, for, uh, the wealth of the diligent, he who is qualified for the wealth, to go and give it to the one who has slack hand? God will never do that. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. That is the principle of God. Even if you are a Christian, as long as you have a slack hand, you will become poor. You give title, you don't give title, you hope, you, you stop ever no, or you don't stop ever no, you ask for an open ghetto, or don't open ghetto, you will still come to poverty. Because the principle says, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. You have to be diligent to be rich. And if you are, and, uh, he doesn't say you have to be diligent as a Christian. No, just diligent. Either Christian, no Christian, is just the diligence that matters. God makes people rich because of diligence and hard work, not because they are followers of one or the other prosperity teachers. There is yet a more tragic consequence of this direction of thinking, which is that it warps the underlying sense of love, kindness, and fairness of his sub subscribers. Because if you believe in those kind of things, it means that you don't believe in fairness. There's no fairness. It means you believe that you believe in corruption. In that kind of be you know, believing the, that the wealth of the uh, ungodly, the sinner is laid off for you without you qualifying for it, it means that you believe in corruption. 
you don't have kindness. So you lose your kindness, you lose your sense of fairness, you lose your sense of love. It makes you a non-believer. That is what these prosperity preachers have made us to become. Whereas the Bible teaches us to love our enemies, this kind of teaching ends up causing to hope and pray for the downfall or misfortune of the unbelieving well wealthy. And that's what we are doing today. So we will be rejoicing that the unbeliever's wealth will come to us. We will be wishing evil for, the, for somebody else, which is totally against the nature of God. So we can dispossess them of that wealth we have been eyeing. It means we are lost in, which is totally against what God teaches. Lost of the eye, lost of the flesh. So it's totally against the nature of God. So that's, that, that, that whole concept cannot be right because it's against the nature of God. You know, it's like, it's, it, it, that makes us to come under mammon. It means that the God of our life then, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will have to be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So the, God of, the prosperity gospel is being driven by the God of mammon. The way to look at the meaning of Proverbs 13.22 is that we reach wealth when... The righteous produce a better product than anyone else on the market. That is the only way for the wealth of the ungodly to come to you. For example, can you come again? Uh, uh, success. Let's say I'm writing books. These are my books, right? Yes. These are my books. And you are the buyer. You need to buy good books. Yes. So this one was written by somebody else. And you read it, you say, no, it's not so good. But you read this, it, and it's wonderful, great. And then, which one will you buy? Which, the one you don't like or the one you like? The one I like. The one you like. So when you produce, when you as a believer, produce better quality than anybody else in town, everybody will be buying from you. And they are, they are not buying for free. They are bringing their wealth and their riches to buy the product from you. So you are giving them the product that you have produced, which is better than everybody else, and their wealth is remaining with you. That is what it means. By the wealth of the sinner laid up for the righteous. Because the righteous will produce something, a service or goods that is of a higher quality, that, they, they, that is so superior that they cannot go to any other place but to come to you. That's the way it's supposed to work. But in, in Christianity these days, in this uh, prosperity gospel circles, they just would think that, no, the only thing you need is just to, to pray and believe it and confess it. It's, it's, it's delusion. They call it wealth transfer. Wealth transfer. It's delusional. It's rubbish. Thank you. So, the way to look at the meaning of Pro Proverbs 13, 22 is that we reach wealth when the righteous produces. That is why the church must be preaching the principles of production. The principles of how Christians can begin to produce better product than anyone else in the market. And that's why I've been reading all those books that I was showing you people the other day. This is because the righteous will produce goods and services not only to impress people but also to please God. And because God's standard is higher than just to sell standard, so because God requires higher standard, so it means your product is of higher standard. And that's why you are able to produce better stuff than anybody else who is not pleasing God, just pleasing himself. The transfer of wealth that prosperity teachers should emphasize is not God taking from the wicked to give to the believer, but rather people buying from the righteous in exchange for the best quality of goods in the market. Remember, there is no transfer of wealth without Luke 10, 10 to 12. That means Luke 16, 10 to 12. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. So no matter, there is no way something will transfer to you if you are unjust and you are not faithful. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, you must learn to be faithful in the laws of money, in the principles of wealth creation. Who will commit to you, to, to your trust, true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, 
who will give you what is your own? The point here is that the wealth of the world comes only to the believer who produces better goods. Somebody wrote this testimony today. Hello, do you know of a Hispanic prophet called Diomi Baez? He came to my former church a few years ago and he claims to work in the miraculous signs and wonders. I remember the pastor of the church was conducting a fundraising campaign in the church for this man. He said he must host him well. So he was raising for he was raising for 30,000 pounds for his stay and honorarium. Back then, I was surprised as the church is what you call small church, not mega church. And somehow the pastor managed to raise the money, 30,000 pounds. The pastor was put in the most expensive hotel in the city. And a, friend, a family friend who worked at the cleaner in that hotel confirmed that she found so many empty beer bottles. That's where they are. Their, their money, 30,000 pounds is going. Empty beer, beer bottles, and he's a miracle worker. Miracle worker prophet. Empty beer bottles in his room. He prophesied to a lady who had cancer and said she would not die but leave. Sadly, the woman died. <laughs> Unfortunately, the woman died a few years later. You see, deception. These people are just killing us. They are destroying us. They are destroying people's lives. And that's why we must stand up for righteousness and say no, no way for the God of Mammon. The God of Mammon has hijacked the church. Now, is there any way for Christians to prosper? Yes. Not just Christians, anybody. Christians or unbelievers or just follow the laws of money. If you follow the laws of money, it will be good with you.